Do you wanna live stream pre-recorded videos? My name is Evan DiDio. Today I'm gonna to show you everything you need to know to do that without becoming a nerd like me. Let's jump into the video. Hello, Evan DiDio here. Today we're gonna to be discussing how to live stream pre-recorded videos onto YouTube. Now this actually goes for Facebook um, or any other platforms that allows live streaming. If you wanna make sure things don't go wrong, this is definitely the way to do it because maybe you're nervous about live streaming like I am and you just wanna get the video up and live without actually having to worry about your internet crashing. That's what I'm gonna be talking about in this video. Now there are several different ways to do this. One, you can use a cloud-based live streaming software. That is companies like Restream, StreamYard, Resi, where you upload the video and then you know your Wi-Fi might not be great, but that doesn't matter because it is basing it off of their Wi-Fi. Most of the time, these are going to be paid, such as Restream, which I will specifically be showing you Restream today on the good old Android computer. Of course, Resi, I'll be doing more videos on Resi in the future. If you wanna look them up, everything will be linked up in the description below if you wanna find these resources. StreamYard might be the most inexpensive way of doing this, but if you're looking for free, uh, and you have good internet connection and a good computer, like me, that's a monster. Then you could also use something like vMix, you could also use OBS, and OBS is actually free, vMix you can download for free. Not sure if you can stream pre-recorded videos in the free version though. But that's if you already have good Wi-Fi and a good computer. But let's say you don't have that. Let's say you've got terrible Wi-Fi and a super slow computer that you've had for 10 years. You wanna go ahead and sign up with a subscription with Restream, or StreamYard or Resi. All right, let's compare prices of StreamYard, Restream, and Resi. These are the three ones I'll focus on. There are others, there are probably free free stuff you can use, but I know that these work. So let's, let's get into it. Let's start with StreamYard. So StreamYard, their most popular plan is $20 a month. It's the basic plan. Um, it allows unlimited streaming. You can do logos, you can do overlays, backgrounds. Um, you can even do recording up to four hours. You can record stuff up to four hours, multi-stream to three different destinations. So it's probably gonna be $20 a month if you get the annual plan, 20 or $39. $39 is their professional plan. That's like their, you get everything. So $39 a month, that's really not bad if you get the annual plan. If Let's move on to Restream. This is what my church currently uses for live streaming pre-recorded videos. Looks like you're gonna have to spend about $49 a month. That's the professional plan. Um, if you get the premium plan, that's $99 a month. And here's the difference with it too. So the professional plan, whenever you upload a video, it can only be up to an hour. It can't be more than an hour. So that's why we had to get the premium version because some of our videos go over an hour. So we wanted to be able to stream an hour long video and then the limit is five gigabytes. And that's mainly the reason why we have that is because five gigabytes is this, this amount of file, this size. So even if it's two hours and it's just this, you can't do that. It's gotta be five gigabytes, which that's a lot, don't get me wrong. And we usually stick right in there because I like 4K, I like big files. Enough said. If you go to the professional plan, you can do up to two gigabytes. And all of that is pretty easy to fix in editing. You just, whenever you're exporting it in Premiere Pro or whatever you use to edit, you just export it as, you know, underneath two 2,000 megabits math. Just Google it. There you go. Let's let's look at Resi though. So probably one of the best things that you could do with Resi is use ProPresenter to live stream. Now many of you all probably already know what ProPresenter is, um, but it looks like ProPresenter might just be $69 a month and you get that Resi live stream. Now Resi works differently than other live streaming platforms. Subscribe for that content. I won't go into that in this video. But doesn't matter which one you pick, you need to create a YouTube event next. So let's do that. All right, so in order to create a live stream event, you go to the home page, you go up here to this little camera button, click that, and then click go live. Then you come in here, you wait for it to load, <laughs> and you click schedule stream, come down here, click create new. Then you put in the title, uh, search based title. Then you upload a custom thumbnail. Let's just pick a random image. There we go, that'll work. Just $60, bam. Then you schedule it. So what I like to do is I like to add 10 minute countdowns to my pre-recorded videos. Now, some of you are against countdowns. Some of you are for countdowns. Or maybe I was actually talking with Reagan V Films. Great to see it, by the way, on Instagram. And we were discussing countdowns and they said that they don't like countdowns as much because it kind of turns viewers off um, and you know, that's mostly a personal thing. 
Um, they like to actually use a reel to talking about what the church is about pre-service, which I think is a great idea. I like countdowns because I remove them afterwards. So what's the big deal? After the live stream, go into YouTube studio, trim it out. There you go. Now, now for the viewer, this is important, for the viewer that's watching on the replay, they don't have to skip through a countdown or even leave your video. It's right there. So very helpful. If you're going to do a countdown, trim it out afterwards. Do us all a favor, trim it out. Okay, but since we've got a countdown, I'm going to, let's say I scheduled for tonight. Let's say the service, church service, if we're talking about church, starts at 7.05, okay? Then I'm going to say in YouTube that it's going to start at 7.05. And of course, I'm going to make sure it's private for now. Then I'm going to come down here to create stream, click it, let it load for a second, and then here we go. Now this is normally what you see whenever you're getting ready to live stream from a streaming software. But we're not streaming yet, so I'm going to come over here to YouTube Studio. I'm going to click the little studio button up here. Bam! I'm going to come down here to content. You're getting to see some of my analytics here. Come over to live. And then go down here to, to the upcoming live stream right here. Right now it's private, so no one can see this. And now's when I work on my description. I add my tags. Which, by the way, if you don't know anything about YouTube SEO, you need to know about YouTube SEO, title tags, descriptions. Otherwise, you wouldn't be seeing this video right now if I didn't work on that. So watch this video next if you wanna learn more about that and why your church should be doing it specifically. This is not enough tags, okay? I would fill it up up to 500 characters, especially using vidIQ. vidIQ does not um, pay me to say I like them. I just really like vidIQ. I use the keyword inspector. Let's say um, SEO, since I'm talking about search engine optimization, I can see that that gets more than 1,600,000 searches a month with a pretty good bit of competition, but SEO for beginners is even better, so I'm just gonna click add and done. That's all I'll do for now. Of course, I would do more in real life. Um, I would use my vidIQ checklist, two out of five tag count, need to add more tags, four out of five tag volume, zero out of five keywords in title, so I would add SEO for beginners. Man, y'all are getting like all my little pieces of advice back here. And then, that's basically it. I can also change the thumbnail if I wanna work on the thumbnail. I can add it to playlists. I can change the schedule time from right here. And then I would make it public. Then I would come in here to Restream. And let's say we're using Restream. I would click Add Channel. And I would end up adding one of these YouTubes. So you see I already have all these already in here. I would turn on YouTube. I would change the event it's going to. Now this is actually for my church's YouTube channel, so I would choose you know, my event in the event section, and then at the scheduled time, it would stream to that. But first, let's upload the video to Restream. So now something else I wanna discuss with you is Handbrake. Handbrake is what I use to downsize the video to make it easier for whatever streaming platform I'm using to stream it. But before I get into that, because that's very important. I want you to put your questions in the comments. I seriously want to help answer any questions you may have. I know that this video is pretty quick. It's a lot to take in. But if you have questions, put them in the comments. Maybe I can do a follow-up video pretty soon. But this is, I'm sharing with you all my secrets. So let me know if you have questions. Here is Handbrake. Here is Handbrake. Um, I would drop a file in here. Let's say I'm going to drop the file we were just talking about. It is right here. Pastor Troy Brewer, awesome guy. It's gonna upload to Handbrake, and I've got a preset created. There is a whole Restream article that I'll link up in the description below that give you these exact specifications for doing this. I created a preset so I don't have to go through and change all of those things every time. Um, and of course, it keeps the dimensions at 1920 by 1080, and it's important that you're streaming in 30 frames per second um, for everything. So just, just make sure you're streaming in 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second if you want to. Um, but key int 60, whole nother topic for another day, very nerdy stuff. But then I download that and give that maybe an hour. My computer's a pretty quick computer, so it might take it 30 minutes, but if I were you, I might give it uh, maybe two hours. This is something you might want to plan out in advance. Make sure you've got plenty of six hours before your live stream. That way nothing, nothing really goes wrong. So we're in Restream. Now that you have Restream, come over here to Scheduler. You're gonna click Scheduler. <clears throat> yeah. Click that schedule. It'll, you're gonna wait for it to load because oftentimes it takes a while to load. There we go. And then you're gonna come over here to videos, the video tab, you're gonna click upload a video. And then you're gonna choose a video. So let's say it's this one. I've already uploaded this one, but it might take a little while to upload. Now, here's what I like 
here's what I'm gonna forewarn you on. You need to make sure that the file is the right size, less than five gigabytes or two gigabytes if you're using Restream. I'm not exactly sure what StreamYard specifications or Resi specifications are. Then you would give it at least three hours to upload to Restream. That's what I would recommend um, because that way you don't run into anything. Of course, don't turn off your computer, leave the browser open, give it plenty of time to load and process the video, and then you come over here to Q, schedule recorded video, you choose the video you want, date and time, choose, I would set it for 6.55. Because I have a 10 minute countdown, it's 10 minutes till 7.05 p.m. So I would, that's what I would do, and I would make sure that YouTube is checked under here, um, make sure it's in the right time zone, and voila, to avoid issues. Now here's, here's where I just talked about, to avoid issues with your live stream, and ensure all files are over two, gig two gigabytes and scheduled at least two hours in advance. So that's what I would do. I'm gonna hit cancel though, because I don't wanna do that. And then it's basically good to go. Your YouTube event is public, restream video is ready to go, scheduled for 10 minutes before 7.05. It would go live 10 minutes before 7.05 and everyone would get notified. It's a really cool way of doing it. But that is how you live stream pre-recorded videos to YouTube. The results are awesome. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.